Why NASA disagrees with Elon Musk's plan to nuke Mars. Hello lovely YouTube family, welcome back to Tech Envision. In today's video we're going to talk about Elon Musk's plans where he intends to nuke Mars. Before we start, I would want you to hit that red subscribe button so you never miss out on any of our videos. NASA opposes Elon's ambition to nuke Mars because the concept is untested and unproven. For those who are unaware, Elon plans to deploy nuclear bombs above the Mars' poles to create artificial pulsating suns, which can melt ice caps and release icy carbon dioxide and water into the Martian atmosphere, resulting in a global climate change on Mars. While we think this is an excellent concept because there isn't a better plan for terraforming Mars, we have no clue how much ice there is on the Mars' poles. The late show with Stephen Colbert uh, was, was that the, the sun is a, a nuclear explosion, a fusion explosion. That's what the sun is. It's an ongoing fusion explosion. So if you wanted to uh, add energy to Mars, like warm up Mars, the, really the source of almost all energy in the universe is fusion. If the Martian poles melt, air pressure may rise two times to 20 times, or 1.2% by 12% of the thickness of the Earth's atmosphere. Let us suppose that it will raise the Martian atmosphere to approximately 6.6% the thickness of the Earth. That is enough to have liquid water on the Martian surface and possibly start the planet's global warming process. However, even if there is enough ice, there would also be enough uranium to construct the nukes that would destroy the pole, which is a lot of uranium. Overall, NASA opposes nuking Mars because it will be challenging and unlikely to succeed. Fortunately, Musk now clarified what he meant. He intends to explode nuclear weapons on Mars poles, vaporizing the planet ice caps and releasing massive amounts of water vapor and CO2 in the Martian atmosphere, which will result in an uncontrollable greenhouse effect. And it decays into smaller um, atoms, then uh, that, that's, that's fission. But what I was really talking about is creating two little suns, uh, two pulsing suns above the north and south pole of Mars that would as the planet's temperature increases owing to the greenhouse gases produced by the explosions, the Martians' rocks heat up and emit more CO2, which warms the Earth even more, releasing more CO2 and so on. It would result in a planet with a comparable temperature to Earth, but a considerably thicker atmosphere with liquid water. All we need to do is finish their transition to get a few plants to pump out some oxygen and we're good to go. Heat up and, and you'd have sort of water, more water, water vapor and um, CO2 in the, in the Martian atmosphere, which in that case is good because the, the CO2 ends up warming, warming Mars up. And so you get a positive um, sort of reaction, like it's a positive cycle of, of warming on Mars. Now we now live on a planet, so Musk's goal is to nuke Mars and turn it into a genuine paradise for Musk to control over. Okay, maybe leave the governing bit, but you get the idea. Use nuclear bombs to liberate resources on Mars that can perform all the terraforming for humanity. Doesn't it sound fantastic? You know, if things expand to fully available resources, so then like sometimes you should say no to things that you, that you don't. Um, you know, like the original Falcon 1 team, which the, 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 the fairing... We'll launch a couple thousand of bombs to Mars and you'll have a second Earth. Musk, on the other hand, may have rushed into one of the most considering it through. What a surprise, this terraform scheme has had several problems. To begin with, the number of nuclear devices required is enormous. According to estimates such as maneuver would be need to use nearly 10,000 of the biggest nuclear weapons. Given that the globe only possesses around 13,000 of these nukes, Musk may have, have a tough time getting hands on them, much alone transporting them to Mars. However, it may unintentionally bring mutually assured destruction to an end. When a large number of nuclear weapons are detonated, the danger of a nuclear winter increases. Dust and debris would be sent into the atmosphere as a result of the explosion. Mars' tremendous wind speed will hold it there for years, blotting off the sun, just like the dinosaur extinction. As a result, the temperature on the surface plummets. As of all the water freezes, the emitted greenhouse gases are reabsorbed, possibly leaving Mars colder than what we began. Like you want to warm Mars up, you don't want to warm Earth up, you know, so. Well, I mean, the, the, the Mars thing is, is really, like if you say what is going to be really important to the preservation of, uh, of, of civilization or life as we know it, more than just, you know, humanity, uh, because of course we bring life as we know it to Mars. Also, there's radiation. Mars lacks both a magnetic field and an ozone layer. It implies that the surface is exposed to the sun's lethal radiation. Despite Mars's frigid temperature, the UV and cosmic radiation levels there are much higher than on Earth, necessitating the use of some fairly potent sunscreen. If you then nuked it, the radiation levels flying around the globe would be dangerously high. Radioactive fallout would essentially contaminate the land, water, and air, preventing any life from surviving. It is particularly troubling given that the surface already possesses radiation levels considered hazardous for human settlement. So if you want to live in a place, don't start by blowing it up with nuclear bombs. So we believe you'd agree that exacerbating the radiation is a terrible idea. Finally, there's a significant issue with Musk's proposal. According to recent research, there isn't enough CO2 in the poles to produce the substantial climate attic change required to start the runway effect. 
Furthermore, all the water vapor produced as a greenhouse gas and the seeds for future Mars seas would either be lost to space or condense out of the atmosphere quickly after the explosions. In summary, Mars lacks the resources to terraform itself. We must provide minerals required of the planet. Humanity is not yet strong enough to even contemplate altering the world to meet our wants. Elon is missing the mark here. To transform Mars into anything even slightly like Earth, much more like just warming it up is required. So there's one exit. Besides a fully and re fully and rapid rapidly reusable um, rocket, you need to also have orbital refilling or retanking. That's got to be that's fundamental. Um, Decrease the toxicity of the atmosphere, introduce oxygen, raise the amount of H2O, reduce the toxicity of the soil, reduce cosmic radiation levels, and prevent the new denser atmosphere from being blown away by solar winds. No one can address none of these problems with a big old bomb. There's also a chance that Mars contains a population of native creatures. We could wipe them out if we detonated even one nuclear weapon, much alone 10,000. It is ethically acceptable to kill off perhaps the universes of other aliens to create a new home for us, even if the aliens are just single called life. Musk had said that his next rocket starship would transport humans to Mars and establish a permanent base. His concept art for the project contains biodomes, which are required for such a mission. But if you already have a permanent base on Mars, why would you look to bomb it to oblivion? So no, Musk was not correct, and he said that we should detonate nuclear weapons on Mars. It should just not work. But it did get us talking about the Mars ambitions, and Musk is one of the only individuals who generally wants to see humanity become an interplanetary species. That is where the real thrill resides. We haven't found a great answer to repair Mars all at once, but we live in a period when people are prepared to explore the planet that has tormented us for a millennia. As a result, this is one of the most thrilling periods to be alive. So continue fantasizing about Mars, but be grateful that it will be biospheres and bases rather than nuclear apocalypses. While individuals have differing opinions, NASA is skeptical about Elon Musk's proposal to nuke Mars. The agency thinks that changing Mars with current technology is not feasible. Anyone in the proper state of mind would argue with such an idea since it's a very complicated idea and indicates that anything can happen. The pressure of the atmosphere on Mars is less than 1% that of the pressure in the Earth's atmosphere. Any water vapor on the surface would evaporate or freeze very fast. Carbon dioxide, CO2, and water vapor H2O are the only greenhouse gases expected to be abundant enough on Mars to cause substantial greenhouse warming. Forever confined to one planet, or one where we are out there exploring the stars and, and on, on many planets. And I think the, the latter one is far more exciting and inspiring, because the former is basically waiting around until some, some extinction event. So, because eventually there will be one. For those who don't know about NASA's Mars 2020 Presence of Variance rover mission, have a look at this. The Mars 2020 rover will look for uh, evidence of ancient microbial life, which will help NASA learn more about Mars's previous habitability. Mars 2020 Preservance rover mission from NASA is also part of NASA's Mars Exploration Program that aims to investigate Mars and provide a continuous stream of scientific information and exploration via a specially selected series of robotic orbiters, landers, and mobile laboratories. Uh, or, or last much longer. And the second is that it would be an, uh, an amazing adventure that, uh, that we could all enjoy uh, vicariously, uh, if not uh, personally. Linked with an extremely high bandwidth, Mars and Earth communication system helps in communication. Mars will be explored by robots for an extended period of time. The project outlines high priority aims and objectives for missions to Mars, as well as crucial concerns regarding the potential life on other another planet. Perseverance goes a step further, looking for evidence of previous microscopic life on Mars as well as indications of livable circumstances. This Perseverance rover is equipped with high-tech and efficient drill capable of collecting and storing soil samples from the planet's surface of Mars. These samples may return to Earth by a future expedition, but it will also motivate scientists to examine the components in labs on Earth, which will be equipped with unique room-sized equipment that is just too big to transport to Mars. Um, but. Um but with fusion, the great difficulty is just, is keeping the reaction from is keeping it the fire from going out. It, it's quite hard to sustain a fusion reaction uh, unless you have something very big like the sun, and where, where you have it, the sun has gravitational confinement of a fusion reaction. This expedition will also collect data, information, and demonstrate technology and tools that will be used to address the problems that future human missions to Mars might face. You can't do gravitational confinement on Earth. You have to do some sort of uh, electromagnetic confinement or one form or another uh, or, a, or a kinetic confinement by slamming things into each other um, so it's it's quite tricky to prevent a fusion explosion from not immediately extinguishing it included a particular order to test a way of producing oxygen from the plant's atmosphere locating other resources such as water bodies surface water getting better improving landing strategies and identifying weather particulars and other would like to not be dead when by the time we go to Mars. That's <laughs> my aspiration here. Um, so, 
if it's taken us 18 years just to get ready to do the first people to orbit, we better improve our rate of innovation or, you know, based on... Potential environmental conditions affecting potential future astronauts working and living on Mars. That's all for today. I hope you liked the video. If you did, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel so you never miss any amazing video from us.